All right, Valor Kids, we're going into our Bible story. So if you want to grab your adventure Bible, you can join me in Daniel chapter 1. We're reading verse 1 through 21. I actually have Daniel written right here, so you know how to spell his name. Daniel chapter 1, verse 1 through 21. And in my adventure Bible, it's on page 900. And 54. So if you grab your adventure Bible, you can join me on page 954. Let's see here. In the uh, the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand along with with some of the articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia and put in the treasure house of his God. So right off the bat, we have Nebuchadnezzar, a king from Babylon, who doesn't worship God, and he comes and he seizes some stuff from God's temple and throws him in his false God's temple, along with also... Uh, claiming the king of Judah. Now we're here in verse 3. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, the name Belthasar. To Hananiah, he named him Shadrach. To Mishael, Meshach. And to Azariah, Abednego. Now, I have these names written up here because this is something I wanted to go over. You see, Nebuchadnezzar came and he conquered Judah. And he started to take people to serve in his palace. And he was going to teach them all of the ways of Babylon. So he took Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and he wanted them to become more like Babylonians. So what he did is he started to teach them the language and all of the literature, like books, of Babylon. But he wanted to make them more like Babylonians, so he renamed them. Daniel became Belthazar, Hananiah became Shadrach, uh, Mishael became Meshach, and Azariah became Abednego. And the reason I bring this up is even though we're going to refer to them with these names for the rest of the reading today, Daniel is Daniel in the lion's den, Daniel. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who you can read about later on, who got in trouble with the king later on. So you can see that it's these same people that we're talking about in the book of Daniel later on. So we're going to focus on that today, but when he took them away from their home, he wanted them to forget their old ways, which is one of the reasons he had them learning the new language, the new books, and even renamed them. So he was trying to get rid of who they were and change them into who he wanted them to be. But let's read on and see what they did, these men who came from Judah. Verse 8, But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. You see, God had told all of the Israelites, here is what you eat, here is what you don't eat. And the food coming from the king's table was what God said not to eat. So Daniel, not just deciding to do something on his own, he went to the person he was under and asked for permission. Hey, can I do this? Let's read on and see what happens. Verse 9. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my lord the king who has assigned your food and drink. 
why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. So he's telling Daniel, I don't want to die because you don't want to eat this food. What does Daniel say? Verse 11. Daniel then said to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to uh, to this and tested them for 10 days. So Daniel is saying, don't just take me at my word. Let us prove it. Let us eat the way God has instructed us to eat and then see if this is working or not. If you give us these 10 days, if you don't think it's working, we'll agree to do as you've said. But what happened at the end of those 10 days? This is verse 15. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters, uh, enchanters in his whole kingdom. And Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. So they decided to follow God and keep themselves holy, pure, not defiling themselves with the uh, food they weren't supposed to eat. And they stayed true to God. And they were shown to be wiser than all the other people that the king had tried to employ. Man, this is a pretty cool ruler Pastor Tina found. I think, as uh, she said, these are going to be in the boxes this week. You know, we were talking about Daniel in our Bible story today, and he was saying that he should be measured up against the other people when he asked to eat just the vegetables and water. He said, take stock of us after we've done this for 10 days and see if we don't measure up against them as even better. Now, that's a pretty cool measuring uh, utility there. And on the back, it's got some cool stuff too. And, oh, I've got a note here from Pastor Tina Aaron, memory verse jumble. Let's make sure all the words are here. Then we can number them and write them in order with our fun pen, Pastor Tina. So I'm going to move that note out of the way. And it looks like I've got a word jumble and a place for writing them. So we're going to start with the word jumble. We're going to need our fun pen. And we're going to need our supplies that come in the little tub with the lid on it. And it says here, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy to... And then a bunch of jumbled words. Uh, this is your true and proper worship. Romans 12, 1. So we know that the memory verse part is there. So I'm going to grab out... <laughs> I've got an ink pad here, which I'm going to need. And I'm going to need my little applicator tool. It looks like it can... Put it on the ink pad and then stamp it over here. So we're going to stamp these and make sure all the words are here. So therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer. So I'm going to get some ink here and find the word offer. I'm going to put a little dot on there. Spell. And the word offer is O-F-F-E-R. Offer. Okay, and the next word is your. Y-O-U-R. So I'm going to get some ink here, and I'm going to find your, and I'm going to put a dot next to it. I found it on mine. Then the next word is bodies. B-O-D-I-E-S. I found mine right there, so I put a dot on it. And then the next word uh, looks like she put them together as a. A-S-A. So it's two words there. I'm going to put a dot next to those as well. So I've got a few dots on the paper already. And the next word is living. L-I-V-I-N-G. Living. 
and I found it right there. So I've got the dot for living. The next word is sacrifice. S-A-C-R-I-F-I-C-E. That's a long one. And I found mine on this page. And then the next word is holy. H-O-L-Y. Holy. There we go. The next word, and, A-N-D. I found that one pretty easily myself. So I've got a lot of these already have dots on them. The next word is pleasing. P-L-E-A-S-I-N-G. Pleasing. Yes, the next word is to. T-O. I found that one there. And then the final word in our jumble is God. G-O-D. You know, I found all of them on my sheet, so I've got the little dots next to them. So I'm going to put my dotting supplies away and put the lid back on the ink here. Oh, there we go. I'm going to get it to fit. I'm going to put my lid back on, and I'm going to move that over, because the next part, we're going to need our cool pen here. So we need to be able to put these in order so we can put them on the sheet over here. So we're going to put the uh, numbers next to them in that blue dot and make sure uh, make sure you have your pen uh, ready to go. I've got to press down on this guy's hair to get him to be ready here. So the first word is offer, O-F-F-E-R. And in that blue dot, I'm just putting the number one. And mine is blue. Pastor Tina is telling me I got blue. You may have different colors. You may even have different looking uh, color on your pen. It's possible. The second word is your. Y-O-U-R. So I'm going to put a two in the dot with your next to it. And then the next word is bodies. B-O-D-I-E-S. So I get my number three on there. Then as a, those two words, A-S-A -A is my number four. And then the next word is living, L-I-V-I-N-G. That's number five. Then sacrifice, S-A-C-R-I-F-I-C-E. That's number six. So I put a six in that dot. Then holy, H-O-L-Y, will be number seven. I got my seven there. And A-N-D is number eight. Pleasing, P-L-E-A-S-I-N-G, that's number nine. Then two, T-O, is number ten. And God is number eleven, G O. So I've got all of mine with their numbers in their dots. And I'm going to grab my sheet here. We've got the spaces right here for writing them out. So therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer O-F-F-E-R. Then number two, your Y-O-U-R. Then number three, bodies, B O. D I E S, then number four, as a A S, then a little space, and then the A again. Number five, living L I V I N G. Then number six, sacrifice S A C R I F I C E. And I am just reading them right off my sheet right here, so I know how to spell them. And then I go to number seven, holy H. O L Y number eight and A N D number nine pleasing P L E A S I N G and you can see I've still got plenty of room on mine if you can see my writing there. Pastor Tina has got this all ready to go. So after pleasing, which is number nine, comes number ten two T. Oh, number 11, God, capital G, O, D. This is your true and proper worship, Romans 12, 1. So I've got my entire scripture 
all finished now on my sheet. I don't know if you can see my pin as easily as you see if I did it with something else, but we've got it all on there. And that's our memory verse today. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Hey Valor Kids, this is Pastor Tina. You know what? This week's memory verse, thank you very much for unjumbling this jumble. It's kind of fun, right? Now the Word of God says to uh, present ourselves as uh, our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. So let's talk about presenting yourself, your body, as a living sacrifice. You know, if you come before a king, this is like a king's crown here, you have to know how to come before the king. We think, I think we've talked about this before, right? You have to know how to come before a king. So if you are supposed to go to bed at night, we as children, when I was a little girl, we had to go put on our pajamas and then come tell our parents good night. That was part of how we went to bed at night. So you didn't show up to bed ready to go to bed without your pajamas on when I was a little kid. You came in afterwards and you presented yourself to your parents. I, this is like a nice squishy pillow that's always fun to sleep with, right? So you don't, So when I was a little kid, we had to prepare ourselves for bed and we had to present ourselves to our parents. What do your parents ask before you go to bed? My parents asked, did you brush your teeth? Of course I did. I always did. I love to brush my teeth. It was my favorite thing. The uppers, the bottoms, the inside, the tongue. I love brushing my teeth. Okay, did you wash your face and wash your hands before you go to bed? Yes, because sticky hands and dirty hands were never allowed. So we always had to wash our hands and face too. Do you have your pajamas on? I always have my pajamas on. Didn't matter where I was, even if I had to sleep in dad's old t-shirt, I always had my pajamas on because the clothes of the day would get dirty with the day and we were never allowed to make our beds dirty by sleeping in our clothes of the day. Um, let me think. It also, besides presenting yourselves to uh, your parents, how about if you go to gym class in school and that day you're, uh, you're ready to, for gym class and you know that day is basketball. And so did you bring your basketball with you? Or did you get one out of the bin from the, from the gym? Because you don't go to play basketball without a ball. That's not basketball, that's throwing air. Throwing air doesn't work, right? So you gotta take a basketball and present yourself to the gym teacher ready to learn how to dribble, how to shoot, and how to play. How to defend and how to be on offense. That's part of learning how to be uh, presenting yourself pleasing and, and also uh, before whatever you're going to do. So the word of God in our memory verse says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. You know, the word says that uh, be therefore holy as I am holy. Well, how do you learn how to be holy? You read the word of God. You learn what God's word says. It will tell you how to be holy. We cast down vain imaginations. We are not selfish. We learn to consider other peoples before we speak, before we do. We don't throw tantrums. We don't fight against our brothers and sisters just because we want our way. That's, that's learning how to become pleasing and also holy before God because we learn that God is not selfish when it comes to us. He gave his son his very best gift. He gave his very best gift in giving us the Holy Spirit. He gave us our very best gift by giving us blessings. You know, God doesn't tell us to seek after things ever. Things change all the time. These squishy pillows, they are so much fun. This one is in the, in the kids store, in the Valor Kids store, uh, when you're earning your Bible box. There's another one like it. I think it's a beaver or an otter or something. But to learn to be holy and pleasing to God is to learn that he wants you to seek after the blessings. Blessings are bigger than things. Blessings are bigger than anything you can own or anything that's so cool and so cute, right? The blessing is you live in the favor of God. So wherever you go and whatever you do, God gives you favor. He provides for you. You know the things that you earn, the Bible box for doing your memory verses? You earn that because of the mercies of God, because God and the Holy Ghost put that on Pastor Tina's heart so that you could be blessed by learning about God. God wants you to have an abundance of blessings. But if you don't believe he wants you to have an abundance of blessings, then all the fun things and all the other things start to go away. And it's kind of plain and simple, right?
and then you just learn the word and it's not as much fun. But if you learn about God's word and who he is, all the fun stuff as well makes life fun, but it also helps you to learn how to be holy and pleasing to God. So let's find out what else we have for today. Hey there, Valor Kids. We got a lot of cool stuff on the table here, like this CD player or a radio. And you know, on a radio, you can hear a lot of people saying stuff on that radio when you're listening to it. Maybe while you're in a car or in a classroom or something like that, you may hear one. But you know, sometimes people will use words that we shouldn't use. They'll use words that aren't acceptable to God. And just because you're hearing them doesn't mean that you should use them. It's the same thing when we're watching movies. Now, this is a really good movie, in my opinion. But there are movies out there that will show people doing things that God doesn't approve of. And just because, you know, there's people out there trying to uh, use those movies to convince you to do them doesn't mean that God wants you to do them. So even though you're hearing it or seeing something, uh, it doesn't mean that you should do those things. You know, I use my phone to access the Internet, and there's a lot of people online who will uh, try and tell me that I should do things that I know God doesn't want me to do. And I don't listen to them, I listen to God's Word. And it's the same thing. Maybe you're listening to YouTube or watching a movie online, and there could be things in those movies that God doesn't want you to do. But it comes down to our will, our decision, to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Now, what does that really sort of look like? So I have this pole here, and you'll notice that this pole is very strong. I can hold it on this end, and it doesn't bend. And if I try to bend it, it's going to take a lot of strength for me to even try and bend this here. And our will, when it aligns with God's will, is much like this. It's very strong. It won't go away from that path. And that's why we continue to get God's word in our life. And this string is like the will of somebody who's not ever listening to God, not focusing on what God does, and doing the things that God doesn't want them to do. If I try and let their will stand here, and then the world tells them to do something, they keep on falling off and doing something that God doesn't want them to do. Our will should be built on God's word, so that when we do His will and our will, and they're aligned, it'll be strong enough that it doesn't matter what we're hearing on the radio, it doesn't matter what we're seeing in the movies, or online, or on YouTube, or a movie that we're watching. Remember, God's will is the one that we should focus on.